Tradition, Modernity, Postmodernity, The Traditional Vision of Man by Sayyid Hussain Nasser The modern world came into being in the West during the Renaissance through the replacement of God as the center of the circle of existence by man and of theocentrism by an anthropomorphism which continues to dominate the horizon of modern life despite the appearance of so many infrahuman tendencies in recent times. The kingdom of man has replaced the kingdom of God, whatever the modern and its progeny, the postmodern perspective, have become dominant. Naturally, much of the interest of modern thought has focused upon the definition of man, that hero of Renaissance humanism whose Promethean feats have been celebrated, by so many modern Western artists, writers, and philosophers. But humanism was to lead to the dehumanization of man, and finally to the attempt to define him by his own invention, that is, the machine, as can be seen in the flood of scientific writings today, which try to identify the human body as a complicated machine and even the mind is no more than the product of a supercomputer called the brain, as if there were no mind before man invented computers. The fall from the traditional vision of man, who was always defined vis-a-vis -vis the divine principle, to the current definition of man by the machine, was not an immediate one, but took place in stages. With the Renaissance in the West, man was declared as being no longer half-angel, half-terrestrial being, but a wholly earthly creature possessing the power of reason and external senses, which defined him. This classical humanism, which replaced the traditional vision based upon theocentrism, led to the rabid rationalism that culminated in the 18th and 19th centuries with the aggrandizement of man and his titanic creations in the name of reason and his right to dominance over the world. Having killed the gods, man now seemed to be in complete control of the earth and totally master of his own destiny. But a crack soon appeared in this edifice of rationalism, attacked by existentialists such as Kierkegaard, as well as by that erratic but ingenious critic of modernism, Nietzsche, whom Fritjof Schuan, the indubitable master of traditional doctrines, has quite rightly called an illuminated psychopath. Nietzsche's cry that God is dead was also in reality a declaration of the death of man's humanity, a defacing of the face he had always turned to God. By destroying the face of God in their thought, Western champions of modernism also destroyed the face of man, turning him into a faceless being now completely ready to be defined from below by the machine and also to be devoured by his own technological inventions. Today we are living at this critical moment of history when the modern view of man now spread over all the continents, has created a humanity which has become a danger to global survival. The very activities of modern man, nay, his very existence, threatens the web of life on earth. We are acting as if we are the last generation of humanity on earth, participating with feverish pitch in an endless but futile activity which, in the name of alleviating the material life of man, is not only threatening human civilization, but also endangering the whole fabric of life which supports us as living beings here on earth. And yet, in this late hour, the traditional vision of man has been and is still being restated with clarity and lucidity all over the globe while something of traditional humanity still survives, especially in non-Western climes. To the extent that the din of modern life reveals to an ever greater extent the hollow nature of that life and the danger for the whole earth of man cut off from his spiritual roots becomes ever more evident 
the truth of the traditional vision of man based on the divine origin of the human state is being taken seriously once again, even in non-traditional circles, at least by those who are aware of the veritable dimension of the present human crisis. The traditional vision is based on the theomorphic nature of the human state and on an ontology which is the very antithesis of secular humanism and the self-deification of man. What is divine in man is not his self, but the self, with capital S, which is the self of all selves. The divine norm defines what constitutes the human state and constitutes our primordial nature, which we bear deep within us despite all the vicissitudes of human existence and the gradual fall of man, spiritually speaking, since the Golden Age. That is why, in fact, any authentic formulation of the traditional vision of man, based on perennial teachings, has always the freshness of a spring morning.